So now with the Florida aging at the time, and the Florida was approaching 100 years old itself, it was leaking a lot, so the membership had to decide, do we continue to patch it up or do we get a new boat? Well, this was just after Florida had been moved out to the location right here, mm -hmm. and you can still see the pilings and some of the mooring lines yes. uh, out there along the dock that were set in there to moor the Florida. It turns out this location was rougher than the old location, and uh, some of the plates started being pulled out from the hull. Uh, we had, we had, uh, I had been on the uh, board by that time, and uh, we had a survey made of the hull, and it was the thickness of the of the steel was uh, uh, about a tenth of an inch in most places at the water line, and uh, and so it was became pretty clear that uh, it would not last very long out, out in this location. So we went through uh, various discussions on what to replace it with. The main alternatives were to get a barge mm -hmm. and, and build a house on a barge and moor it right here. Mm -hmm. uh, barges were fairly cheap. Uh, unfortunately, when you get into the architecture of building a house on a barge of some size, uh, the cross bracing required to, uh, to uh, uh, houses are perfectly great when they're straight up and down, but when they start doing this sort of thing, as we're doing, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, you need a sizable uh, uh, architecture and, mm -hmm. and, and structure, and pretty soon you're talking about a sizable cost. Uh, 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 Judd Goldman, who was a member at the time, was a, a yacht broker, and he ran into uh, the, the, the ship that was for sale uh, that belonged to the, the uh, Canadian uh, National Railway System, mm -hmm. and it was running between the mainland, New Brunswick, and Prince Edward Island, right. and had been put in reserve at the time, which meant the engines were still running and it was available for service, uh, but uh, it was well past its prime. And so uh, uh, we set up a, a couple of people to look at it. Uh, it was somewhat stripped at the time, mm -hmm. uh, which came a problem later on when we tried to reconstruct everything. Right, right. Jules Trout had many stories about that. Yeah. But, uh, and additionally, the people of Prince Edward Island had a lot of loyalty to the Abbey, as they called it. To this day. And uh, they didn't really want to sell it to, uh, to Americans particularly, but uh, the alternative was to scrap it, and so they finally said, okay. So uh, back in Chicago, when the discussion in the club was, should we buy it or not, I had heard stories that because the Florida wasn't big enough to accommodate all the membership, that, did they meet in the Naval Armory yes. at the meeting, yes. which was which is now gone, but it was just north of where the Florida was. That's great. And there, the way it was described to me is that the debate was spirited. Is that a good description of the debate was spirited? Or? I, I was there, and uh, it certainly was. But I think after you know, all the ramifications uh, were put together. I, I, I think it, uh, it was in agreement good. that we should acquire it. And uh, I guess we got a good deal on it uh, in terms of yeah. the scrap value. Uh, but then, of course, we had to put together a team to bring it here. Uh, we had a, a a uh, certified merchant captain as a member with connections to uh, the uh, Merchant Marine Academy. Mm -hmm. And he roused it up a, a bunch of officers. And then, of course, uh, some of the uh, Canadian crew mm -hmm. came out of retirement, including Captain Pike, who was right. uh, 
uh, a captain of the of the Abbey for some years until he retired. I was not part of that group. Uh, so there's a plaque. Considered? Was there a temptation? Oh yes, yes. Yeah. I, uh, I, I, really, I really couldn't take the time off from work. And I know a lot of your friends went on that trip. Yes. There's a plaque. I think it's still yes. up there at the at the staircase, the staircase, which lists all the crew. Uh, and then we had to get the permits to come through the seaway, and uh, it was registered as a private yacht. Uh, and for a time, it was uh, we got the story from the uh, lock people. Uh, it was the second largest private yacht in, in the world, next to the mm -hmm. uh, Britannia of, 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 the, of the Queen of, of England, that is, sure. I heard that because it was private that the uh, fee for the St. Lawrence lock, locks was $75 at the time, otherwise it would have been substantially more. If it was a commercial vessel, I'm sure that was yeah. true. Yeah, I, I, I don't have any information about that. Wow. So it got here, and uh, and, and it, it was initially it was tied up in, in, uh, at Navy Pier, uh, f and for its final cruise, it it went out from Navy Pier, out around the crib, and then back in, and then through the locks, and tied up on the other side of this wall, which right. still was part of the river system at that time. Right. There was no DuSable Harbor that was the turnaround basin for the Chicago River. That's correct. Yeah. I guess what, people, what larger boats would do is back into it and, and, and turn this way. So the Abbey's parked on, on the other side of the wall, and in those days the Abbey couldn't come around the wall because the wall went to the Lake Michigan wall. So the Abbey was there and the Florida was here and there's the dock in between. That's right, yeah. So the club, did the club meet on the Florida and work on the Abbey during that time? Yes. And, and, and the Abbey was not suitable for use at that point mm -hmm. as, a, as a club ship. The sanitary sewer system went overboard because it was in the uh, ocean. That's right. And so that had to be connected to the city through a sump and pumps and so forth. Mm -hmm. The electrical system was all DC based on ship's power. And so we had to convert uh, shore power uh, uh, things to a uh, AC, mm -hmm. except for some things that couldn't be changed, mm -hmm. so we had to convert AC to DC for those systems. So, uh, the, the, all of that. The heating system was uh, partially uh, unusable. For example, the uh, steam lines, it was steam at that mm -hmm. time, yes. off of the ship's auxiliary power. Uh, and. Uh, the, the steam lines going up to the bridge were crimped off because of leaks. So the bridge the bridge here was unheated in the winter, and of course unair conditioned in the summer. So the extremes of temperature caused a deterioration in the walls and all of that. Uh, uh, it took a, a, a good year, and a lot of that just demolishing stuff uh, the, the, all the uh, cabins had their own toilets, which had to be dismantled, and uh, and uh, the, you see some of, of that debris and some of the uh, uh, little ante rooms off the uh, the rail deck off off the cabins up here. Oh, okay, yeah. And then there was a debate what to do with the cabins up here uh, in the old days. On the Pere Marquette, I am told, there were cabins available to rent, and some people rented them, and with not necessarily uh, good intentions, let's say. Yeah. So uh, it was determined largely by the, the female contingent that 
we would not have any rooms for rent here. Mm -hmm. And uh, a, a number of decisions were made. Of course, the docks had been built to service the uh, the Florida, which, which was located in a east, in a north south, north -south right. position, and uh, and extended all the way to the shoreline. So we we had to cut away a section of that dock, mm -hmm. and and then the abbey was. Under tow by a couple of commercial tow boats, uh, towed out and and out through the harbor and placed in the position that it's in right now. In order to do that, we had to uh, take a sounding of the uh, of the harbor, mm -hmm. and we had somebody who had that kind of equipment on board and, and uh, presented us with a contour of the harbor bottom. That's a good point. Which which came in handy later the on. The abbey is pretty deep in this in this harbor, so it's sitting right yeah. above the floor. It, right above the floor, yeah, mm -hmm. and, and and of course its motion has hollowed out some uh, underneath it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, all of that was done. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the ship was moved over here. The interior was uh, brought up to some standards. The bar had to be built in the existing bar. Mm -hmm. It was simply a sitting room at one time. And we had a nice debate about what size it should be, and people remembered the old bar in Florida. No, that's too small. But we finally came up with the, the, the design. Our current bar is larger than the bar was in the Florida. Oh yes, by a good bit. 